Welcome back to the second topic in chapter one, properties of real numbers. This is another vocab type section, and chances are, in this one, you will know most of the properties because you use most of the properties, uh, but you might not remember the names of them. And so that's the, that's the challenge of this one, is remembering which one's which. Um, our learning targets for today, I can identify and use properties of real numbers. It's fascinating. So our properties, the first one we have, or first we have two types of properties. We have additive and multiplicative. Additive is just an adjective for addition. Multiplicative is just an adjective for multiplication. So we'll have addition properties and multiplication properties. And pretty much every one of our properties has an additive and a multiplicative part to it. The first one is the commutative property. The commutative property says that we can switch the order if we have addition and multiplication. So additive, a plus b equals b plus a. 2 plus 3 equals 3 plus 2. I mean, you know that. That's the commutative property. Um, commutative, that's a commute. A commute is where you go from one place to another. Um, so it's the, the numbers are able to move. Uh, multiplicative, a times b equals b times a. So that's a commutative property. Um, the next one is the associative property. Now these two get confused a lot. The associative is what does it associate with? It's about grouping. And so we'll have parentheses. Here we can have a plus b plus c equals a plus b plus c. We can add the first two together and then the third one. Or we can add the second two together and then the first one. And we'll still have the same thing. Um, combined with the commutative property, we could switch the B and the C. We could add the A and the C together, and then the B. So basically, between the two of these, you can add things together in any order you want. Um, same thing with multiplicative. We can multiply the first two and the third, or the second two and the first, or combining it with the commutative, we can do the first and the third and then the middle one, and it does not matter. So those are the two that you'll use a ton. Um, a lot of times you won't necessarily remember what the name of them is, but in this chapter that is important. Uh, the next one is the identity property. We have an additive identity. We have a multiplicative identity. An identity is something where we can either add or multiply to a number to keep the same thing. So what can you add to any number to keep it the same? Uh, zero. So anything plus zero equals itself. Zero is the additive identity. What well, can you multiply to any number to keep the same thing? One. So one is the multiplicative identity. That is just earth shattering, isn't it? Uh, we also have inverse properties. Now inverses you use a ton, but you don't necessarily think of yourself as using an inverse. A lot of times we're undoing what we're doing. When we're solving equations, how do you get x plus 2? How do you get rid of the plus 2? You subtract 2. And really what you're doing is you're adding negative 2 to give you the identity, which we know is the same. Um, but that's a lot of stuff that just happens in the background that we don't have to state. So an inverse, what would get rid of a? Negative a gets rid of a. So the negatives will undo addition. And what are the negatives called? If you remember back into the first section, I mentioned it when we talked about integers. Integers are defined as the whole numbers and their opposites. The opposite is the negative. How about the multiplicative inverse? What would get rid of a? Well, let's think what could get rid of 2? to multiply by the one half, we would divide by two. And so the same thing, a times one over a equals one. Now what do we call the multiplicative inverse? Hmm, we haven't talked about this one yet this year. It's a big word, starts with r. You think you have it? It's the reciprocal. The reciprocal is the multiplicative inverse. And so really, when we have 2 times x, and we multiply by 
1 half, we get 1 times x, we just don't write the 1 there. Um, and so the reciprocal of a whole number is just 1 over that number. What's the reciprocal of 2 thirds? 3 over 2. We just flip the fraction. Our next property is closure. Now this is a weird property because we don't use it as we're solving things. This is more of a, an idea property. Um, but what closure says um, for addition and multiplication, um, for addition, if we add two things in a set, if it is closed, a closed set, then the answer will also be in that set. The real numbers is closed under addition and multiplication. So a plus b, any two real numbers, will still be a real number. And multiplication, a times b, multiplying any two real numbers, will still be a real number. Um, not all sets are closed under each thing. Um, for instance, if we take a really small set, like the set of numbers on a dice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that is not closed under addition or multiplication, because 5 plus 6 is not one of the things, neither is 5 times 6. Um, and so closure is kind of weird. Um, you get into more of it when you get into advanced math, like abstract algebra. Uh, we don't see much of it here, but here it is anyway. And our last property is the distributive property, which is another one that you have seen, and this one you probably even know the name of, because you distribute. That's what you do. And this one doesn't have an additive and multiplica multiplicative one. It's just one property. Um, a times b plus c, we can multiply the a to the b and the a to the c to get a, b plus a, c. Um, and we'll be distributing bigger things throughout the year, um, but that's a distributive property. Chances are that's one of the ones that you got right on your pretest. Um, that is section two. It's all this page. It's just a bunch of properties, um, lots of vocab. Uh, next section, we'll get into a little bit of math, um, and I will see you then.